your child is going to school for the first time or headed back after summer break, back to school anxiety is overwhelming. We know. So Kaleidoscope Therapy is a local clinic that specializes in therapy for kids, teens, and their families. And this morning we have Stephanie sharing some of the methods that she's found that might help you. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us. We are so grateful and know that a lot of parents and kids are going to benefit from this conversation. Um, before we really chat back to school, though, tell us just a little bit about Kaleidoscope, how you started this practice and what you specifically offer kids and their families. Yeah, so Kaleidoscope Therapy was opened in September of last year, but I've been practicing in Huntsville for about six and a half years now. Awesome. Um, and we specialize, like you said, in working with children, teens, and their families. And the goal of our practice is to provide a really specialized experience so that kids and teens are getting what they need out of therapy. A lot of times it's not the traditional therapy you kind of think of. Yeah. Um, they need more kind of play, experiential sort of things like art and music and movement in order to really get the most out of their therapy experience. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up because I did want to touch on play therapy. Mm -hmm. I know that's a concept that you're really uh, proud about um, because, I mean, too, I mean, this age, it, therapy looks different than what it might look like for an adult. The brain development yes. is different yeah. in those, yeah. you know, child and even teen years. Um, so kind of walk me through some more of the practices that you specifically developed for these age groups. Yeah, so play therapy, the idea is, especially for younger children, they don't have the verbal skills yet to fully articulate what they're feeling, what their experiences are. They may have some words for that, but they need other ways of expressing themselves. So in play therapy, we have different ways of going about it. We might, for younger children, um, we have a, a specific play therapy room where we go and oh. there's toys that are specially picked for them that, um, so that they can choose and direct um, the play and express themselves that way. For older kids, we'll use some more directive techniques. We might use games or again, like I said, movement to get them more engaged and more comfortable with sharing about what's going on and, and support them in their goals and therapy. Yeah, wonderful that it's a really curated experience for each child. Yeah. So Stephanie, thank you so much for bringing that kind of practice here um, to our area. Uh, let's talk now back to school specifically. I feel like that's a whole other realm in and of itself. Yes. <laughs> Whether you have a little child or a preteen taking on middle school, whatever it might be, those are <laughs> formative years, uh, any words of wisdom you can share with parents who might have kids who are particularly struggling right now? Yeah, so I always tell parents the name of the game before school is preparation. So especially if you have a child who's feeling a little bit nervous about going back to school or is maybe going to school for the first time, we wanna do as much prep work and conversation beforehand. Luckily, a lot of our local schools have a lot of opportunities to get into the school building before school even gets started. Oh, wonderful, okay. Um, whether that's a private tour of the school or going to meet the teacher or going to orientation, there's lots of opportunities for getting into the school and being able um, to get more familiar with the setting, to ask the specific questions they might have. It's also super important to leave lots of room for conversation in between mm -hmm. now and when school starts. Um, it might be kind of frustrating at times because you might get repetitive questions about sure. things, but it's important for kids to have that opportunity to ask those questions over and over and mm -hmm. over again. It's how their brain organizes it and makes sense of it to help make the anxiety feel less overwhelming and be able to kind of feel more confident going into yeah, that first day of school. Yeah, very much so. Kind of just, again, creating that safe space for your child to talk. <gasps> With that, though, Stephanie, I do kind of want to ask you a question. I think sometimes parents, um, you know, they want to create this open space where we're learning more, I think, especially in in recent years, you know, letting yes, your child yes. feel the emotions that he or she may need to feel. Mm -hmm. um, at what point, though, do we kind of have to be like, okay, like, come on now, you know, we're going to go to school. You know, I think there's kind of this balance of like, you know, I kind of grew up in a, a mindset of like, put your big girl pants on, we're going to go, we're going to have a sure. good day, you know, you <laughs> smile if you're crying, like we're going to feel better, but then also, you know, still kind of feeling what you need to feel. How do you kind of find that balance? And maybe too, at what point do we need to seek help from something again like Kaleidoscope? Absolutely. So with anxiety, there is always just that that piece of we have to leave a little bit, a little bit of space for struggle, mm -hmm. right? In order to overcome the fear, we have to put ourselves out there. We have to be vulnerable in order to overcome the fear. Yeah. And so, you know, obviously the preparation work is super important and will set your child up to have more confidence to do that. But I talk to parents a lot about how important empathy is through this mm -hmm. process. So validating your child's feelings. So when they're saying, I just don't know if I can go today, mom, oh, that's so hard. I know that mm -hmm. must feel really stressful. What can we do to get in the door today? What are the steps we're gonna take? So we're, we're helping them take not just their emotional brain, but their logic brain and integrate it together so they're able to feel 
like they can do it. Yeah, I like that, the emotional and logical connection. Yeah. Like, yeah, validate what you feel, but then make a game plan to, to move forward. Yeah, Stephanie, that's such great advice. Thank you so much for coming on. Before yeah. we let you go, we do know that you have some great resources you want to highlight. Where can we kind of, you know, find these and also, you know, connect with you in Kaleidoscope? Yes, so I like these books for younger children. Um, this is a great book for if your, your child is struggling with separation anxiety about the first day of school, um, The Invisible String, and then this book is more specifically about anxiety in general and offering psychoeducation Wonderful. that is in kid-friendly terms. Wonderful. Um, yeah. yeah, and we, we you can find us at kaleidoscopehuntsville.com and we're located off of Whitesburg and Governor's Drive. All right, we'll have that info on tvliving.com as well. Stephanie, thank you for coming thank on. We you. know you shared some great words of wisdom with a lot of families and our kids are now better prepared for back to school because of you. So thank you so much. We thank you.